with Kubiak likely retiring, I decided to go over some things where it's like, it might be harder to replace him than some others think. Um, I know because a lot of people just kind of wanted Gary gone, and here we are. But he did rank fourth in total yards, 393.3. Yards per place, 6.2, fifth. Um, they ranked sixth in touchdown passes, but 21st in interceptions. And they were eighth in rushing touchdowns. So they were scoring quite a bit of points. <laughs> and overall, they were... I know the attempts don't rank highly, but it was balanced for the team. For the most part, they were at 32.3 uh, passing attempts per game, 29.3 rushing attempts. However, 26th in attempts passing, 8th in rushing attempts. They were completing 67.6% of their passes, good for 7th. Um, yards per attempt, they were 2nd with 8.3 per completion, also 2nd, 12.2. And... The one area where obviously they could definitely, definitely get better is protecting the quarterback. Um, they were sacked 39 times. That ranked 21st. Sack percentage was at 7%, which is good for 23rd there. And what sack percentage is, is the amount of like percentage of those pass attempts where Kirk was sacked. 7% of the time... Kirk was getting sacked. So, obviously, the rushing numbers were good. We all know that. And then you have some areas where they could definitely get a little better. Um, third down was... Both third and fourth down percentage were actually ranked 17th. And at 40.9% on third down, 56.5% on fourth down. They were, however, sixth in red zone, 71.2%. And then points per game, they were actually 11th with 26.9 points per game. Now, a lot of these numbers, you're like, well, aside from it's like kind of just maybe improve the offensive line and then maybe you can make third downs maybe a more manageable thing just because if your offensive line's better and you're a run first team, in theory, you should be better. But we get to the real probably problems here the real problems of this and it's kind of like if you look at it per drive so their time per drive was two minutes and 44 seconds off of the clock each time that was good for 20th they were however seventh in yards per drive at 35.7 but 23rd in plays per drive at 5.9 points per drive they had that a little bit they were number 10 uh 2.44 points per drive um however their scoring percentage and their turnover percentage are not where you want them to be so which would just be the amount of possessions they had where they either scored or turned the ball over and for scoring percentage they're at 39.8 percent good for 18th and then turnover percentage was 12.5 percent which was good for 22nd and so for the most part, what this offense was, it was a big play machine and it would get points through that. But at the same time, if you didn't get the big play, this thing had a very, very good possibility of stalling out. And then obviously at 12.5%, there was also a pretty good chance it could end in a turnover. So it was very boom or bust. So it's kind of interesting when you start to look at, well, how well can we really replace Kubiak? Because it's like he had a bunch of yards, but at the same time, in some of those key categories, it's kind of middling. So, just so we can talk about some guys who could replace him, um, I think there are two in-house guys if they opted to go that way, and I think everybody would hate both of them. Um, I think Rick Dennison is a guy that would maybe pop up. Um, not really sure, but he's been an offensive coordinator under Gary Kubiak before. I know Kubiak's going to be gone, but Zimmer was very, very, very adamant. He wanted this system to stay. He wants this kind of, he likes the wide zones. He likes the play actions. He likes all of that. So Rick Dennison running Kubiak's offense, basically, 
is probably something that could happen. I don't know if it will, but it might be something that pops up. And then you also have Clint Kubiak, which, once again, based off of everybody's reaction to how the Zimmer thing happened last year with him promoting his kid to co-defensive coordinator, um, something tells me people would hate that. And although I do think people would like Clint Kubiak a whole lot more than the, the, than they would like Rick Dennison, just because, well, at least Clint was working with Cousins. He'll understand Cousins maybe a little bit more than what Gary did at the beginning of 2020. And hopefully we can avoid whatever that was in the first half of the year with Kirk. Now, the external options, I'm going to start with the one that I think probably makes the most sense to happen, and that's even in general. Um, Anthony Lynn, he got fired from the Chargers. I know. But he was with Kubiak from 97 to 2002, both as a player and a coach. So he was in this system. He played in it. He helped coach it. And then later on in his career... From 2005 through 2006, he was working with Mike Zimmer. So they're both familiar with the guy. He runs this system. He's adamant about running the football, much like Zimmer likes. And it's probably the fit that makes the most sense. I don't think it's anything that... I I think this is probably the favorite to win the job somehow. Despite the fact that there are two in-house guys that could maybe come in and do it. Anthony Lynn probably makes the most sense. My worry with Anthony Lynn is mostly, okay, if the defense comes back and some of these offensive numbers are the same, this is probably a pretty decent team next year, which means he might get another head coaching opportunity, which means continuity problems again. So that's my concern there. Um, Then you have another one where that same concern might happen. Um, Mike LaFleur, um, if that LaFleur name sounds familiar, yes, he is related to the Packers head coach, but he is currently the San Francisco 49ers passing game coordinator, and he's tried to get jobs elsewhere before, like he's had, like in years past, these last couple of years here, um, he's had requests to be interviewed for offensive coordinator jobs, however, the Niners have blocked it, so I don't anticipate this. But Mike LaFleur comes there. The LaFleurs run a very similar system. It's all wide zone. Like, it's Kyle Shanahan does the same thing. And I think this one might be a more uh, modern version of it, one would think. So it's something I would like to maybe see fiddled around with. Don't know if they can get him strictly because San Francisco has blocked him numerous times before. But... It's something to keep in there. And then my third one, I do have a third one, and this is kind of a, this is probably more wild card than the other two because I haven't seen him ever get any love in the media ever. But I was just looking through coaching staffs to be like, maybe. So Aaron Cromer from the Los Angeles Rams, he is the offensive line coach and the run game coordinator for the Rams who have, you know, I mean, as far as his job is concerned, they've always had a good line. It's a wide zone system. It's a more flashy system, what we have. And I think, for the most part, it might work with Zimmer just because he is the run game guy. And he's also the offensive line coach, which means maybe we see some offensive line improvement. Um, I don't think that one's going to happen. But I was like, I don't know if I would mind seeing it if it got the offensive line better. And it's already a run first team, so helping the line can only help the team. Well, I mean, that's true in every case. But, yeah, I would like to know your guys' thoughts and comments down below. And like and subscribing, super helpful. And until next time, I bid you all adieu.